Welcome to the Delight Your Marriage podcast. You're joining me, Bella Rose, as I dive deep into the beauty, power, and truths about intimacy. Learn not only the practicals, but the heart behind what making love is all about. Delight Your Marriage. Hi there. Welcome to Delight Your Marriage. I'm so grateful that you're joining me. I have some things to talk about, uh, namely noticing, appreciating, and really being grateful, cherishing the uniquenesses of your spouse. And we've got a lot to talk about. Why does that matter to the female heart? Why does that matter to the male heart? You both are very different, very, very, very different. (laughs) And when we treat each other the same, that's when we really run into problems. So Every man I've ever worked with, every woman I've ever worked with, each one of them are unique. Each and every one. They are not the same. And uh, we've got a lot to get into with that. But if you see your spouse as unique and, and, ha- and those idiosyncrasies, those uniquenesses, something to be noticed and appreciated, oh, you're going to have such a better life and a much better marriage. So let's dive into it. And before we do, if you are struggling in your marriage, we can help. If you're having a good marriage, but not a great marriage, we can help. If it's stale, sexless, intimate, less, lots of strife, struggle, or just quiet, uh, avoiding of the hard things, we can help. So we'd love to go to delightyourmarriage.com slash cc And uh, just find out, just find out, might as well look into it. And if you have a friend who you know is suffering, maybe this is the episode to send them, this very one. All right, let's dive into it. So I first of all, just need to give a shout out to my husband who, as we speak, is hammering nails in my office to get it ready for me to record there. Um, But right now I'm in a different place recording. And uh, anyway, point of the matter is he's incredible. I never asked him to do that. He decided that probably these things needed to go up and he needed to rebuild my desk and all these things. And it's true because my desk was just falling apart because I'm the one that tried to put it together. And yes, I have uh, significant limits in that regard. (laughs) So what does this have to do with the topic at hand? Notice, appreciate, and actually cherish the uniquenesses and idiosyncrasies of your spouse. Let's start this out with recognizing who your spouse is, whether you're a husband or a wife, it's relevant. When God made Adam, he made God in, he made Adam in God's image. He made him in his image. And then he made Eve and he made her in his image. That's what he says. I made the male and female in my image. I created them. Male and female. It's, it wasn't an afterthought. He actually uniquely made your spouse. In Psalm 139, it talks about, I I just invite you to read 139, Psalm 139 over and over again. The heart of your father is in there. He uniquely designed you, destined you, decided that you were going to be exactly who you are. It wasn't an afterthought. Your personality, your strengths, even your weaknesses were figured out by the master creator of the universe. The the one who decided how to make worms move along the ground and digest soil and, and excrete even healthier soil so that plants could grow, like so that mushrooms are all connected in the under part of the soil so that, I mean, he made it all to understand how a butterfly transforms from a caterpillar to this incredible creation. I mean, the God of the universe knit you together in your mother's womb. It was an active process that he was part of. In fact, not part of, he made it happen. He knit you together. And what does knit even mean? Think about a woman who is knitting 
sorry, I'm sure men, men knit too, but I just happen to only have met women, <laughs> women knitters. But like what a careful process that is. I have learned to knit. I don't do it. I know how to crochet. That feels easier to me, but it's hard and it, and it takes care and you, you, you can't knit in a rush. It, it takes careful attention. And especially if it's a complex pattern, you've got to get all sorts of, you've got to have different yarns and you've got to have somebody, a knitter was recently telling me about it. And I was just like, wow, all of that went into this beautiful hat. No wonder, but you're not a beautiful hat. I mean, you are unique. You are not like every other person out there. You have a unique way of thinking and processing and you have a soul. You have a personality. You have a character. You, you have experiences. You've processed them in a certain ways. You have ways of coping with things. You have dreams and desires. All of that is present in your spouse as well. Now, personally, I really don't like the concept that men are simple. I just don't. I know that's that's funny for a lot of people to say, and I just don't think it's true. I've never met a simple husband, and I've worked with lots of them. <laughs> now, I speak in generalities because I think they are helpful. I think frameworks help. But you are your spouse's spouse. <laughs> You discover your spouse and who they are deeply. Use my frameworks as a general, but then you go deep into who they are. And for those of you that are familiar with the five love languages, I support that. That's a phenomenal framework. However, I actually think the Delight Your Marriage framework goes deeper. Yes, I do. <laughs> I'm going to just own that I think that's primary because men and women are different first. And then from there... It's uniquely uh, distributed in terms of physical touch or time or or what have you. Because here, let me just clarify. The Delight Your Marriage Framework, if you're new to, to our work, let me just clarify. For a woman to feel loved, she needs to feel safe. Safe. You are who you say you are. What you do aligns with your values. Uh, drunkenness is insanely unsafe. Any kind of addiction where he goes off and, and comes back in a different way that she can't trust, that is unsafe. Another unsafety aspect is judgments. Judgment about who she is, what she can and she can't do. That's controlling behavior that causes her to feel unsafe and runs away from you. Runs away. That's what she will do. She will run away if she feels unsafe because you're judging her, criticizing her, critiquing her, it's a very, very damaging to who she is as a woman. Her spirit feels broken if she can't be who she is. That's a big part of what we're talking about today. So safety for a, another piece of, of who women are, who your wife is, is, she wants to be known. And so we're talking about that. You to discover her, who she is. It wasn't an accident that she has that personality. She wants you to embrace that. It wasn't an accident. And it's not something that you want to change about her. It's, an, it's something you can embrace and, and see how, how that can align as, as making your family all that it can be. And then finally, for women, she wants to be wholeheartedly cherished. Oh, man. That's the romance, gentlemen. Those are the flowers and the surprises and the random date nights that she doesn't expect and randomly picking her up from work and saying, hey, can I take you to lunch, sexy lady? I mean, come on. <laughs> That's what it is. That's the excitement that gets a little... Um, little excited pitter patter. I mean, that's my husband re remaking the desk in the in the room that I mean, I did not expect at all. That's what this is. It's showing that he cherishes me. That I'm not an afterthought. I'm not something he has to put up with or oh gosh, I bet she's gonna want me to do something for her. <sighs> I wish she wasn't so womanly. No, <laughs> like that is what is at the core of a woman. And that's a good thing. It's a good thing to embrace. 
All right. So dear husbands, what is it that you are seeking to feel loved? Well, respect. It's true. It's just a, it's just a need. It's just a way he was designed. And women, unfortunately, our society is so against that nowadays. We have so thrown that out. You know, I think it's really rebelling against God's way is what it is. Um, and I understand it because men have abused this out of a need that hasn't been met or met in a way that, you know, it, it's the dark side of this, this need, if you will. But um, men don't want to need anything. They don't want to need respect. Oh my gosh. So instead of uh, being vulnerable and, and uh, seeking it in a, in a healthy, good, uh, strategic way that's actually going to be possible and, and potentially beneficial, positive, um, men have sought it in a control way of, okay, you're not going to give me respect. I will take it. I will force you to in whatever way he has power over her, whether he's the one that brings home the bread, um, whether he's the one that is just physically bigger and so he's intimidating, whether he's the one that can manipulate in one way or another where he can make her feel bad and criticize her because he doesn't feel respected. All of that is bad strategy, gentlemen. I understand your need, but don't do that. And dear women... We undermine respect all the time. I didn't realize that for many years. I didn't realize that. Oh my gosh, I didn't realize that I was undermining his respect. I would yell at him in public. I mean, how embarrassing. I had no idea that that was incredibly deflating to him. Oh my gosh, I remember in the grocery store line. Oh, what what embarrassment. What, what um, sh to my shame, to my shame, I did that correcting him whenever he's telling a story, making sure it's right, because you can't have these people thinking it was Wednesday instead of Thursday, because it's definitely Thursday. I definitely know. And I need to interrupt him. And then I need to correct him. Why? Ladies, we don't have to do that. It does not matter those details that he forgets. It doesn't matter. Respect him. It matters more to his heart. Just like you, dear wife, you know, it's legitimate that you want to look beautiful. And it's, and it's appropriate for him to ignore any reason that you might not look beautiful. I, I would not like my husband to tell me that a shirt does not look excellent on me. I would just like to know that it looks excellent no matter what. Sorry. Thank you. I just want, that's the only response I want to hear <laughs> is, is, yes, honey, you're beautiful. <laughs> that's all. That's all I need to hear. I also want him to mean it, but but the truth is, we, we wives, we just don't have to talk all the time and give feedback all the time about every little thing. You know what I did? I literally did this last night, to my shame, once again, but it, I can't, I, yeah, I just so easily slip into it. My husband, if you can believe it, this incredible man's making dinner, an incredibly delicious dinner, I'll tell you, in uh, in retrospect. And he was putting salt on it. Now, I remember the salt shaker is broken. And here he is putting salt on it. And I thought, well, he probably doesn't know that the salt shaker is broken. And it's going to put way more salt than he's intending. So here I am alarmed that he's going to mess up this incredible dinner that he's making. And so I need to let him know that it's broken. And if he's sure he's, you know, not putting too much salt. Yeah, I know. It was that bad. It was that bad. And immediately he's deflated. Ladies, I did this last night. I know. I had to apologize. And I'm like, I can't even believe I did that to you. I am so sorry. And my precious, sweet, wonderful husband, who is human, it took him a little bit to get over it. Because human beings don't get over being um, controlled. You know, that that's hard, ladies. That is hard. Dear wife, it's hard to get over that. And I'm throwing myself in front of the bus because I want you to change too. I want us both to change. Maybe I ended up doing that and I need to tell you about it so that you don't do that to your husband. So that you don't model that for your daughters. Your husband deserves respect because that's how he was designed. Okay, admired. So that, again, has so much to do with the work we're doing in this 
episode, <laughs> the work we're doing. See, we, you and I, we're doing work today. It is. We're, we're reflecting on ourselves and how we are living into this. Are we living into this? So that's what admired is, is recognizing his strengths, his uniquenesses, what he's good at, and applauding those, appreciating those, being his cheerleader. That's a legitimate position in his life that you get to have. He wants that. He needs that. He's not um, arrogant and has this uh, flimsy ego. No, it's just a legitimate need. Just like the ones that I shared about wives. She needs to be safe. She needs that. And finally, wholehearted sexual intimacy. Dear wife, I, I get that you are tired sometimes. I get that even you're down and your your negative mood that has nothing to do with him. I get that that affects your desire for intimacy. But your husband doesn't change even in those seasons. He was designed a certain way. God made him that way. He knit your husband together. This is something to be enjoyed and embraced, acknowledged, appreciated, not something to him and ha about, oh, I wish my husband didn't need that all the time. No, it's like, oh, let me discover this man. Oh, I see. He likes that better than that. Okay, I'm doing the other one. Yes, I am. Because I want to know this man. I want to know what gets him excited. I want this man to be the happiest husband in the world. You know, in Proverbs 5, I encourage you, wife, to read it. There is so much about young men, avoid the adulterer, avoid the prostitute, don't go next to her house, get away from the woman who will tempt you, and instead be satisfied by the wife of your youth. Be satisfied. But there's even a portion in that scripture, I invite you to read it. It says, be inebriated with her love. Inebriated. That means drunk. That means smashed. That means absolutely incapacitated. You can't drive home, love. <laughs> Dear wife, let's do that for our man. Let's do that. Let's get our husband inebriated with our love. Though that, that doesn't mean making a really good meal. That's good, ladies. It's good, dear wife. If that if that's how you show him love, that's good. But that's not what we're talking about. In the context of Proverbs 5, in the Bible that I didn't write, that you didn't write, that the God of the universe gave to us as a guide, the Bible invites our husbands to be inebriated cannot drive home because our love making is so amazing. Why not? Why not inebriate him? I mean, check out Song of Solomon's. That woman, she had some inebriation. It even talks about it. <laughs> Song of Solomon says the paradise between her, her thighs. <laughs> I mean, it's almost hilarious to say out loud. It's that explicit. <laughs> but but it, that's what it says. And so, dear husband, dear wife, your spouse is unique. I want you to get excited about what excites your spouse. And whomever you are, whether you're a wife or a husband, I hope that I got you excited, that I understand your side of it. I do. I do. I'm excited to help you. But what you've got to do is enjoy your spouse's side of it. My son and I were walking through the train station yesterday. And um, you know how they have those little shops inside these big train stations. So one of the shops was actually a bar and they had uh, screens. And there were different things on the screens. But one of them was a soccer game. And I turned to my son. I was like, oh my gosh, Poppy would love that. And... Um, and I, I got to thinking about it and I was like, I was excited to see soccer, something that I don't naturally enjoy, but my husband does. My husband naturally 
loves soccer. I mean, it's in his blood. He can't help it. I mean, he plays two to three times a week or more if he can, (laughs) depending on weather. But um, he watches it. He thinks about it. I mean, this is a passion for him. And I'm, I'm over the moon. Okay, babe, go for it. Do that. I love that for you. And I'm excited because he's excited. I invite you to love your spouse and love and appreciate their uniquenesses. My husband woke up the other day and I was, you know, up doing my, my, um, all right, the other day, it was this morning. Um, (laughs) let's, let's not kid ourselves. It was this morning. Anyway, I was doing my, my journal and my, my Bible and all the stuff praying. And, um, I just look over and I, I just see him stretch and I'm just like, this man is the cutest man. I just, I can't believe I get to hang out with this guy. He's so cute. And what I mean by cute is like, I just like who he is. I don't like that. Oh, I wish I would. Oh, it's not perfect. Like, why doesn't he stretch this way? Or, you know, why doesn't he rub his face this way? Or, oh, he snores a little bit. I don't like. No, I just like him. I just think he's great. I think he's cool. I want to hang out with him. I want to spend time with him. Not because of who he can, what he can do for me. Not because of, um what he has done from it, not to pay him back. No, I just like this guy. I mean, I am his number one fan. I just like the way God made him. It's not about whether or not he's going to come over here and fix my office because, uh, because I was kind to him. I want that to be your heart for your spouse not based on whether or not they're filling your delight your marriage framework side. (laughs) No, no. I want you to just pursue figuring out who your spouse is and loving them. So I gave you the start of the framework, right? I gave you, okay, baseline, who is your wife? Safe, known, wholeheartedly cherished. That's what she's seeking. That's what will make her feel delighted in her marriage. But now you go deeper. Now the next level of learning who she is, learning her personality, learning her favorite love language. Does she like gifts more than she likes? Da, 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 da. I mean, learning about her, discovering who God made her to be. That's exciting. And similar to last week's podcast, you get to grow as you, you get to discover God's knitting together of your spouse and dear wife, the same thing. You have the framework now, go deeper. What's the next level? Um, I just want to underline that again. I don't think men are simple. Eat and sex and sleep. And uh, no, they are not simple. And dear husbands, I don't think you should consider yourself simple anymore. Sex is not just a physical need. It is an emotional need for you. It's it's just true. It's not just physical. If a wife is just there physically, he will still not be satisfied. He won't. He wants her to enjoy it. He wants her to pursue it. He wants her to love it. Because what she is loving is not sex. It's loving him. Sex and him are one and the same, dear wife. When she says, no, he's at the top of my list. Sex is at the bottom of my list. The problem is that's one and the same. Dear wife, I used to think that that was different. Like, I just don't like sex. It's not that I don't like my husband. It's sex. No, those are the same. You are talking about your husband when you're talking about sex. And so I just invite all of us women to talk about it with more care, with more gentleness, to repent when we need to, because we will make mistakes. I still make mistakes sometimes because I forget my heart, my husband's heart, because I am not a husband. As much as I spend time with them, as much as I help them, as much as I listen to seek to understand them and help them, I'm not a man. I will not know. And neither are your dear wife. You don't have your husband figured out. You don't. And I just invite you to stop thinking about your own pain so much so that you forget your husband is so much in pain. Because when we're in pain, we put blinders on. It's natural, but we've got to fight through that. 
It's natural to put blinders on and say, I'm in so much pain, there's no way I can focus on my spouse. There's no way. There is a way. It's called Jesus Christ. The person of Jesus was in so much pain and yet he sacrificed and served and loved. No one treated him the way he deserved to be treated. No one. No one. Not one. Can you imagine the God of the universe in human form walking around and these people ignore him and treat him badly and forget that he just did so many miracles and they're like, do another miracle or we're not going to be uh, convinced. He's like, oh, you faithless generation. How long? How long will I strive? And you just see these glimmers of like, are you kidding me? I'm not going to give you a, a miracle. You, just walk around and recognize who I actually am. Don't, no, I'm not going to prove this to you. Are you kidding me? You know, it, like he is so, Jesus is so dignified. Every time people try to put him in his place, he's just like, you have no idea. And yet he sacrificed and served and washed their feet. And over and over and over again, he strived with them. He tried to get them to see. And then the cross. I'm not, I wasn't even talking about the cross. I, now I'm talking about the cross. Like he did this day in and day out and day in and day out and day in and day out. So I just invite you, your spouse, my goodness, your spouse. Is a gift from God to you. They are unique. Your spouse is unique. Look for it. Try to discover who your spouse is. It's beautiful. They're beautiful. They're precious. They're wonderful. They're very different than you. And that's a good thing. You start to discover how awesome God is by discovering how amazing your spouse is. Don't ignore. Don't try to knock them back down to size. Like, how dare you think you're so da, 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 da. No. Hear them. Listen. Want to know more. This is your one and only spouse. You want to be a student of who they are and get excited when you discover something new. I just, I just, oh, I just love that you're listening to this. And like I said, from the get go, you're working. Here you are reflecting on yourself. It's a lot easier to distract yourself about yourself. <laughs> it's much harder to look at the mirror of your character and say, whoa, all I'm doing is focusing on my own pain. All I'm doing is focusing on my own pain, how I'm not getting what I quote unquote deserve. I invite you to flip that around. I get there sometimes too. And it is a discipline to get back on track. Say, Jesus, I know I got distracted. Forgive me for my distraction. For having my, my head in the sand, thinking about myself all the time, what I'm not getting. What in that delight your marriage framework is my spouse uh, not giving me? I get it, but that's not an excuse. Let's get back to let's get back to doing this Jesus way. You got this. You got this. All right, let me pray for you, Father. Um, I'm just so grateful that this spouse is willing to do the work. Here we are on a podcast talking about real things, talking about their character. Don't let us squirm away from looking seriously at ourselves. Are we spending all of our focus and our time thinking about the critical, negative, bad stuff about our spouse and the things they're not doing for us? Rather than trying to discover who you knit your spouse together, their spouse together, you did it. You knit them together. This is your, your masterpiece. As it talks about in Ephesians 3, this spouse of theirs, daughter or son of the king, the king of kings, is important and is a, is a treasure and is to be cherished and is to be discovered and admired and understood. Lord, I pray that the, um, the temptation that this spouse, even right now, listening to my voice has to say, I hope my spouse listens to this, or I hope my husband picks this up, or maybe I should send it to him. Like, just no, no, I hope you get this. 
Lord, I pray that we would stop looking at our spouse with this eye of when are they going to change and put the microscope on ourselves. When am I going to live according to the values that I'm trying to say Jesus actually is? When am I going to serve and sacrifice and pick up my cross in the most human, the most important human relationship I have? That's what I pray for this one. Lord, we love you. We love what you're doing in this place. In Delight Your Marriage, in these programs, through this podcast, Lord, in every person that listens, Lord, to draw their heart even one degree closer to your will, Jesus. We want that. We want that through and through and through. Forgive us of the ways that we put ourselves first. Help us to put you first in your ways first. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, dear one, thank you for listening. My goodness, what a gift and a joy. I don't take it lightly to have your attention for these last 30 or so minutes. I appreciate you. And if you're ready to get yourself, your marriage, your life in the place that you know God God really does want it. You're just not sure how to get there. Go to delightyourmarriage.com slash cc. You owe it to yourself to just figure it out, learn it, learn, understand what this thing is about. And if you have a friend who's suffering, and we all do, who's suffering in marriage, this is just a simple podcast to send it to them. It'll give them the rudimentary stuff of this work, but you might save their family trajectory forever. Like that's a big deal just to have the courage to send it along. I've seen it many times. Thank you. I love you. We'll talk next week.